Hey, bookworms and fellow rebels, welcome back to Supreme Book Dealer. My name is Wes, and today we're about to enter a world of courage, a world of survival, and a world of resistance as we review a literary sensation that has captivated readers of all ages. We are diving in to The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. This is one of my personal childhood memories of just reading the Hunger Games series and loving it really. It's not the greatest book of all time. Usually those popular books are not, but this is a really, really good book. And if you love a gripping dystopian adventure and a fierce female protagonist, then this is the book for you and you are in for a treat. But before we delve into the details, the nitty gritty, let me give you a quick overview of The Hunger Games. So the book is set in a future where the nation of Panem forces its districts to participate in a brutal annual event where the tributes fight to the death. So there's about it's 12 districts. So the you know Panem as a as a as a nation is separated into 12 districts. And in District 12, we follow our protagonist, Katniss Everdeen, a resourceful young woman who volunteers to take her sister's place in the games. That's right, very noble thing to do. So Katniss's little sister. Prim is the actual person who gets selected to participate in the Hunger Games, but Katniss cannot allow her sister to do that, so she volunteers in her place. And the story takes us on a roller coaster from there of survival, rebellion, and love. <laughs> a lot of love. So let's just jump right into the review. So one of the most remarkable features of The Hunger Games is the vivid and chilling world that Suzanne Collins has created. I mean, she splits up these, these 12 districts and some of those districts have power. Some of those districts are more funded than the other ones. And a lot of it is based off of who the winner of The Hunger Games is, right? So there's a very stark contrast between the decadence of the capital and the capital is a place where rich people affluent people live separate from the actual districts i always think of the capital i don't know why but i always think of the capital as as like new york city right and maybe that's because i'm from here and in the in the book and in the movie as well fashion is really big there and fashion is really big here and you know it just it just, it just gives off new york city vibes but anyway so there's a stark contrast between the decadence of the capital and the poverty in the districts and that's that's a a really haunting thing but it's very relatable and very realistic right the arena for the the hunger games itself is meticulously described it's a testament to the author's world building prowess so i don't know if i if i was clear in the beginning each district uh, has two they have two people who play the game the hunger games for that district and basically they fight to the death until there is only one winner that's real brutal that's real haunting daunting um even but that's the story another thing that i love about the hunger games is the character development right the character development in this series is outstanding it's probably one of the best things about the book right katniss is strong she's a complex protagonist and she evolves from a determined survivor to a symbol of rebellion and her relationship with Peta and her relationship with Gail. Gail is her friend who she is in a relationship with, I guess. And Peta is the other tribute from District 12 who she eventually has feelings for. So she she's very complex because she has feelings for both of these these people both for gail and both for peter and you can't help but become emotionally invested in all of their fates you know all these characters are complex and they kind of you know you get attached to them 
a lot of times. The themes and the, the social commentary in The Hunger Games is another bright spot and another highlight of this book. The Hunger Games isn't just an action-packed dystopian thriller. It's a commentary on power. It's a commentary on oppression and the consequences of a society driven by a spectacle. It's a story that explores strength. It's a story that explores the human spirit and it's the power of resistance in the face of overwhelming odds. When I talk about messages, right, this book is jam-packed with messages, jam-packed with themes, jam-packed with a social commentary that can be applied to today, right, to society right now. Um, and that's what makes this book a powerful read is because we can apply those same nuances to this book and then we can turn around, look in the mirror and then apply it there as well. So I don't know. Anyway, let's talk about impact and 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 legacy, right? So this series, the series has had an enormous impact in both literature and in pop culture. Uh, movies have been made about the series. It's been praised for a strong female lead, um, for its themes of social justice, um, and its ability to resonate with readers of all ages. Again, you can be a 10 year old, you can be a 25 year old, you can be a 50 year old, you can find something in this book um, that, that, you can, that, that can resonate with you, right? The Hunger Games trilogy as a whole has inspired uh, discussions of political and ethical issues, uh, making it a powerful force in modern storytelling, right? Right? Great, great, great story. Also, to just kind of sum it all up, Katniss and PETA enter the Hunger Games. They end up being the last two tributes. That's what they call it. I was like struggling for that word earlier. They're the last two tributes, both from District 12, but there can only be one victor. So how do they get out of this problem? And the answer is simple. They threaten to poison themselves so how so there would be no winner in the hunger games and the district specifically president snow who is ends up being the antagonist the main antagonist the the capital cannot allow there to be a hunger games with no winner because if that's the case then what was the point of the hunger games to begin with first time that ever happened so the first for, for that was the first time that ever happened so the first time ever there was there was a they were allowed to be two winners both katniss and both Peta, and that is how the story ends so what is my overall impression of the hunger games it's a gripping it's a thought-provoking and thrilling read that keeps you on the edge of your seat from start to finish it's a book that not only entertains but it also challenges readers to think about the world they live in with that being said that's all i really got right i feel like i'm missing a few things but i'm pretty i'm pretty cool with this right so thank you for joining me in this review of the hunger games by suzanne collins if you've read this book i'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below and if you haven't read it i like, what are you waiting for first and i hope this review has sparked your interest don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe hit that notification bell to stay up to, to stay updated on more book reviews and literary discussions here on supreme book dealer my name is wes you can also hit me up at supremebookdealer at gmail.com as always be well keep reading and peace i'll catch you next time